Hello and welcome to Positive Parenting. I'm Deanne Conrad, Community Relations Supervisor for the Sioux Falls School District. We're thankful that you're joining us here today on Positive Parenting. This program is a joint venture between the Sanford professionals, the medical and child development professionals at Sanford Health, and also the Sioux Falls School District educators. And so we are grateful to have you here today. We're going to be talking about a topic that we really wish we didn't have to address, but it is a current reality of ours. Um, school violence and we want to have a conversation about how to help parents have a conversation with their children. Um, oftentimes we have situations that come uh, across the news networks about uh, violence in other parts of the U.S. in other schools and we want to have that conversation so that people are comfortable talking with their children and helping them through those feelings that they might have. So we have guests here joining us today. And Becky, we'll get started with you if you just introduce yourself, please. Yes, my name is Becky Plugi. I'm a therapist with Sanford Psychiatry and Psychology Clinic here in Sioux Falls. Okay, thanks for being here today, Becky. And? And I'm Jamie Knoll, the Assistant Superintendent with the Sioux Falls School District in charge of administrative services. Thanks both of you for joining us here today. I know uh, in the Sioux Falls School District, something we are looking at constantly is situations that happen around the country. Um, thankfully, we have not had a major uh, situation here in Sioux Falls, but not far from here, um, there was a school shooting down in Harrisburg a couple of years ago, and so the reality exists. It's one of our, our current realities of the day. That's an obvious concern with any of the school administrators, uh, something that we prepare for, plan for, but we hope we never have to utilize. So it's a, a significant thing that we keep in mind and work with uh, and put a lot of things in place to be able to, to account for, but we hope never needs to be used. Yeah, we uh, do a significant amount of training um, and uh, not only training for staff, um, which is very in-depth, but also training our students about how to respond if there is uh, an act of violence at their building. Um, those trainings are, are critical to keeping um, children safe and as much as possible out of harm's way. And the big message that we continue to put out to our public and to our parents, and we've sent this out multiple times mm -hmm. over the last several weeks, months, is to see something, say something, because uh, with our circumstances, our information will truly come from parents and students. They're the ones that inform our, our principals, they're the ones that inform our counselors, our school resource officers, which is another incredible program and, and agreement that we have with the city of Sioux Falls to keep our students safe. But it's really see something, say something. It, it's students and parents talking to us so that we know what's going on in the school. So we can intervene before a situation becomes a, a situation that we would all regret. Right. We are. Um, in constant contact and it's probably daily that we're having conversations about um, you know potential of school violence or uh, threats uh, of that nature not specific generally not daily in Sioux Falls but we do have those situations that we're notified of yeah and, and these things are talked about you're correct daily um, we do go through and just scenarios or conversations of things that we can make better uh, calls from buildings just on, hey, can we do this differently or can we change this? Conversations with our school resource officers, um, and many of which may seem routine to people, but it's something that all builds together into one plan that we have to be able to keep our students safe. Right. As a parent, I know I feel a, a little bothered by the fact that we have to have these conversations, um, but it is a, a reality of today. I, I wish my children were not exposed to the types of um, new stories and such that happen across the country. Um, do you see, I mean, again, we're thankful we haven't had a significant situation here in Sioux Falls, but do you see uh, families and children that are having difficulty with um, really processing the information about an event that happened somewhere else? Well, absolutely. I think uh, a lot of times social media plays a part in, in that, uh, watching a lot of the television broadcasts for lengthy periods of time. And uh, yeah, it, it brings it home. They, they start thinking about their schools and, and what they would do in that situation. And if they're prone to anxiety already, that really amps it up. And mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely see that. Right. And um, 
before we got started with this program, we were talking about you know, some of the stigmas out there of seeking mental health counseling. Um, you know, I, I do hope we, we get past that stigma because it's, if, you, if your eyes are bad, you see an eye doctor. <laughs> right. If your thought processes are um, you know, challenged by things you see in the media, you should see a, a mental health uh, person. Um, are, are we making any gains in, in terms of trying to reduce that stigma? I do think we are. Uh, I think parents love their kids, they're concerned about their kids, and, and they do the best they can. And some of them are very good about wanting to have those conversations with kids. For others, it's more difficult. And so they, they are reaching out more to, I think, the school counselors, um, mental health therapists outside of school, and uh, just other resources um, that can provide for their um, child's needs with things. And we really do uh, partner a lot with our counselors, our school counselors. Um, yes, they're doing uh, scholarship, uh, encouraging kids yeah. to apply for scholarships and colleges and those types of things, but they're doing a whole lot more with uh, really understanding children and yeah. students where they're at and what their needs are and then that partnership with our, yeah. our public uh, providers as well. And I don't think our, our community always realizes because we live in a place that we have so many resources mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the different institutions that are here um, to be able to provide those services to our students is incredible mm -hmm. and you can't find that everywhere right. um, and so with the counselors that we have in our school buildings we have those there obviously but they'll refer on to multiple different entities within our community to, to just give that provided support. Uh, the parents can talk to a school counselor about seeking out some of those opportunities, but there's just a wealth of opportunities within our, our community that'll provide that mental health, mental stability, somebody that they can talk to and work through that. And I know sometimes it's probably difficult to hear that from the parents that they're, they're afraid, they don't know what to do, but they're also a little bit um, timid or afraid to admit to somebody else mm -hmm. that they may not because they feel it's part of their parenting and it's really not it's just something that they need some help and assistance and that can happen to anyone right. but we have so many of those things right here in our community that are available for any family to be able to utilize right we do encourage those conversations to come to school counselors or any trusted mm -hmm. adult mm -hmm. at yeah. the schools but we're kind of a triage center because yeah. that's not necessarily our expertise. Yeah. And so when they, um, they come to you, how are you helping um, children and families work through these feelings of anxiety about um, school situations and things like that? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, I have a conversation usually with the parents about where they're at with the situation because kids feed off their emotions a lot. So. Mm -hmm want to make sure that they're, they're as calm as can be or uh, are ready for that conversation. Also, a lot of times having the kids take the lead with things. Um, sometimes parents think it has to be real complicated and, and a lot of times they have, have questions and, and having them take the lead with the questions and answering those, what concerns do you have, what, what um, can, would make you feel better those types of things and it also depends on on their age a lot of times mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. um, you're going to have a different conversation with an elementary student than you are with a high school student if you're even able to have a high school <laughs> student conversation <laughs> right but that that would be the first uh, <laughs> hurdle to get across right. is having that that conversation with the high school student but let's talk about that age appropriateness um, as you said elementary student you're going to have a little more guarded uh, questioning and that type of thing um, and then it, at a high school level something that you know there's a thought process that develops as as children develop as well but um, mm -hmm. what uh, encouragement could you give to parents about how to how to have those conversations um, different conversations and even, maybe you have an elementary middle and a high schooler you're sitting around the table um, is that the right place so everybody hears the same conversation because sometimes that's easiest, you know, if, if you have the opportunity to sit down, um, maybe you can't get three different opportunities to talk to different grade, grade levels or age levels. Um, but that, Im them, that importance, what, what encouragement can you give to parents? Well, uh, sometimes those conversations do occur when everyone's together, but I, 
I would try to do more of an individualized conversation. Um, the older ones are going to tend to talk more about um, what they've talked about with their friends or social media or what, you know, they, they know a lot more details. They have a lot more opinions mm -hmm. from anything from gun control to what people should have been doing or not doing, um, whereas elementary kids they they don't have um, usually quite that amount of insight Level. unless their parents are having CNN running all day and mm -hmm. then they're exposed to some of that. But um, taking what their questions are and helping them uh, process, watch for if they are having you know a lot of anxiety. They keep bringing it up. They're having headaches and stomach aches or. Um, not comfortable with going to school, mm -hmm. um, th those types of things. Yeah, you said something that struck me is a lot of times we parents think it needs to be complex, but sometimes we're missing the very basic warning signs, as you talked about, those, those warning signs of anxiety, of headaches, stomach aches. All right, do we really have a headache or a stomach ache, or is this our, our go-to complaint because we have a bigger concern about going to school. So you do, do see those types of things surface. Yes, definitely we yeah. see those those surface and then we have to explore a little bit more about um, what's going on with that. A lot of times it goes back to talking um, about what, what you were sharing about the policies of the school and what um, they feel comfortable with to be safe, mm -hmm. such as, you know, the the doors get locked, right. um, reminding of, of the things they know. We don't process things as well when we're anxious. And so mm -hmm. um, being reminding, especially the elementary students, this is what we do. Um, the adults are here to keep you safe. And this right. is our plan. And, um, you know, how just there's different ways kids process things. Sure. You can have them talk about it, write about it, draw about it. Um, all, all kinds of different ways that kind of help them um, right. with that. And in 10 years time, we've significantly yeah. changed our processes, improved our processes yeah. in terms of, of student safety with those key components of locking doors. And, it, and we have, we've built in so many components and, and parents realize, especially if they've had some younger children that have gone through that things have changed over the last, oh, yeah. you know, two years, five years, 10 years. Uh, significantly changed the school resource officer program that we have in the buildings is, mm -hmm. is just incredible and that's a partnership between the the schools and the city of Sioux Falls mm -hmm. um, but in several of these circumstances the the child will go up and talk to the school resource officer and tell them about the things because they built that relationship so yes. that's a, a vital component of that that it is not just school officials it's other people within their community whether that's a clergy person or, or, or if it's a school resource officer a parent they just need to talk to someone about that. But we have changed a lot of the protocols within the schools, mm -hmm. uh, many of which it used to be that they could walk right in and walk into the office and talk to people. We've had to secure those entrances mm -hmm. so that individuals will need to check in. We can verify some things, give them some identification, direct them into the office area or where they need to go appropriately. And there's been so many other things that we have changed too, also in providing services to the students. So like a student assistance team, um, when they do have, or the, a teacher starts to see that there's some struggles with this child, mm -hmm. um, they can refer them at all levels, whether that be elementary, middle school, high school, to a student assistance team who will then seek out resources either in the community or reach out to the parent and talk to the parent. But so much of it is helping as a, a group. It's just not an isolated person. It's not just that they will come in and talk to the building principal. One person. Or right. to a, a counselor. It's a multitude of people. Right. Which so. is... Um, hopefully comforting to that student because mm -hmm. they may not take the action to go, as you said, directly to the principal, mm -hmm. but it's whomever they've built a relationship yeah. with. And then we've done that significant amount of training to those people who are resources mm -hmm. to say, okay, uh, you know, what's just a conversation and what's something else that needs to be shared farther down the line so that we can continue to provide those resources. And we obviously kids. work closely with a lot of those entities within our community. And, and there's things that parents will have to agree to or sign off mm -hmm. as far as sharing of that information. But when they do that, then we can work closely with those uh, providers to help the child. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's what it is, just to step over that hurdle or stigma of something may be wrong or maybe I'm doing something wrong as a parent. And that's not the case. It's just that there's other people that can help and provide those services. It's not the same as it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. 
uh, things, kids have access to so much more information now that they've never had before. Right. Well, that being positive and negative, yes. uh, social media, um, gosh, <laughs> wouldn't, we, wouldn't we all love to rewrite the rules on social <laughs> media? <laughs> um, but it, it, it is um, both a help and a hindrance sometimes to us as school officials. Yeah. Social media has, uh, and we've sent out multiple reminders to parents that sometimes some, some kids will put things on social media, they just don't think. And they're, they're putting things out there that mm -hmm. they can't take back. And once it's there, it's there for anybody to see, whether that be police, um, other students, you know, school officials. And so sometimes they just don't think of what they're putting out there and saying and it's things that they would rarely ever say to somebody face to face, or they realize it's just not appropriate for a school setting, right. but they've made that comment. And once they do, it's too late to just take it back. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been a difficult part with some of the police situations we've dealt with, where they make a comment on there that is considered to be threatening. And when that's made, it is a significant and very serious situation. It'll be taken seriously, and they find themselves in a a bad situation in a very quick hurry. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those can be life-altering situations right. in a very quick hurry. It is a judgment um, call mm -hmm. that one small minute of time where you're lacking judgment and a, you know, a student makes some comment that they think is funny and somebody else doesn't think it's funny and mm -hmm. it kind of comes back around. Social media I know you mentioned it too, that it's one of the things that you deal with as well. Well, absolutely. Um, from a mental health standpoint, a lot of times there's bullying that goes on, there's um, some, like you were saying, they put things out there and then somebody will contact the parent because the child didn't have a conversation with their parent about being worried or upset about something mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then they post something and well, it wasn't exactly what they meant or they were just feeling that way, but we have to take it seriously, um, mm -hmm. self-harm mm -hmm. and suicidal threats or, or thoughts or even just um, threatening um, things that they were mad at their friend that day you know but it it can be good um, in with social media sometimes uh, as far as you know encouragement and quotes and um, right. you know reaching out to others but um, that double-edged sword with Absolutely. some of those things. <laughs> and they do have that ability to talk with others so easily and it's so readily available. They can pick up a phone and be able to contact hundreds of, of different individuals. But a lot of times with their friends, they carry on some of these teen conversations or, or youth conversations that adults wouldn't have that same type of a conversation. Mm -hmm. But instead for them, it's now recorded and they can do it in, in what they feel like being a secluded room where nobody else can see it. But yet, everybody can see it and, and so sometimes just having that conversation with their parents um, but it's also a wealth of information for parents you know mm -hmm. what is my child going through that I'm just not aware of and, and so having some of those agreements sometimes that I am going to look at your social sites and, and mm -hmm. things like that and, and even with my own children we made those agreements that I can go on and look anytime and that sometimes makes them think a little differently. Right, absolutely. And I, I think that that is a good thing and that's a protection that you can, can put into place. They don't always appreciate it, but it, it <laughs> is a, it's a good thing. And, yeah. and then you have to follow through with doing that as well. Yeah. Just saying you're gonna do it and then not doing it mm -hmm. um, or doing it in you know secrecy, taking their phone in. in and I like to just sit with my kids in their presence so they see me actually looking at what they're talking about and and you know and then implementing consequences if there's something that is um, you know a concern or a, a challenge and and certainly there's going to be uh, if it impacts the school there's going to be school consequences yeah. if not legal consequences and in those cases of just bad judgment call or white you know, why did you say this or that? Mm -hmm. um, you do have to take that time, you know, so that they see, oh, she's serious. She's actually going to do that. <laughs> Which, yeah, that might be a strong-armed parenting tactic. But, you know, in, in the bottom line, I mean, that's kind of what we have to be doing these days. 
Absolutely. There's a lot of teachable moments through through those things because sometimes your kid is not is being the bully or is not really handling things real mm -hmm. great and, and you get a certain side maybe from them and you, you, as a parent you think oh wow they're the victim and mm -hmm. then you you look at the um, conversation and wait a minute we need to talk about how how you treat people this wasn't appropriate there's a lot of teachable things through that mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and we had found so many times too that most of the situations we dealt with they're also being discussed somewhere on the social media. So a lot of times parents can be ahead of that uh, or see that or when we've shown the parents the social media sites and, and the comments being made, it puts it into a little bit of a different light for the, the parents. Mm -hmm. And it is, the, the police, the schools take those things very seriously, especially if it's a threatening. Mm -hmm. um, now obviously we'll work with all of those and some are not school issues but it's still wise that parents are aware of them because they may be home issues. I mean, it always will impact the parents and the family. Uh, some of the things are not school relevant, but we still try to make sure the parents know that information and share it with them so that they're aware. Yeah, and I appreciate too uh, some of the, the school things. I know some of the middle schools have held things mm -hmm. just as a, a teaching mechanism mm -hmm. for the parents because mm -hmm. a lot of parents have no idea what, what their app, what their kids are looking at and the different apps or how they work. And having, having mm -hmm. that training can help, help them as well. You know, some, a word that comes to mind as we're discussing this is just partnership yeah. and partnering. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we talk in education about, um, you know, parents being partners in education and gosh, you can be a partner in a lot of different ways and, and we need that, that support from parents where, um, you know, if they're identifying that their child has had, uh, you know, something happening at home, even just letting the school know so that we can be uh -huh. watching yeah. for additional things that happen. Um, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, perhaps they've had a, a family member who's been a victim of something. And then it's that, you know, they, they bring that to school with them and that becomes, and then maybe there's some uh, discipline or situation that comes about because of that, the child is not um, able to process and, mm -hmm. and handle that information as well. So that, that partnership, talk mm -hmm. about partnership between the schools and the city, but the, the schools and the parents, yeah. we need to be, together. <laughs> and, and you're right. I mean, some of those programs that our counselors especially provide or services provide just to talk about some of the social media things because parents don't know. Um, I don't have much for social media sites. Uh, other things keep me busy where I, I just don't have that, but yet I still need to know about it and we still utilize some of that because we have to be able to communicate with our kids and, and parents and be aware of those things. Uh, and our counselors pro provide some of those services and, and just to update parents, hey, this is what some of these things are mm -hmm. and, and just that information, but also to give them resources that they can reach out to and talk to because uh, that's just as vital or just as important. But our community does have a, a wealth of those resources. Yeah, we are lucky in that regard mm -hmm. and, and the partnership, yes. I think, is strong um, mm -hmm. in many facets and, and that only is uh, of benefit to our students and our parents as well. Um, once a student has gotten into a situation or um, has found themselves in a situation, how do we reverse that? Um, hopefully, yeah, I mean, yes, we're going to have some consequences, yeah. school consequences and things like that. Um, but is it possible to reverse that and help them see the error of their ways, if you will? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I think so. Uh, there's a lot of impulsive kids uh, that, you know, you, you give them a few more years and mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't have said or done what they, they did at that, mm -hmm. that time. So I definitely think so. Um, you know, it's a partnership, like you said, mm -hmm. if you have the school reinforcing things, parents, if you have a mental health counselor, or if, if they have some skills maybe they need to work on or addressing some of the reasons or may need to dig deeper why mm -hmm. they were saying or doing what they were doing and, and help them with, with that. But um, definitely can, can look at turning some of those things around. And we, we uh, with many of our things that are discipline related, mm -hmm. we do provide a component in there to be able to reduce those, most often to reduce that uh, mm -hmm. suspension or the discipline if they agree to 
counseling mm -hmm. um, or to meet with a counseling or an assessment so that we can help to determine and work with a family to say, you know what, uh, we understand this has happened. And sometimes with, with youth, they, they think in the moment. Uh, they just don't have those life experiences to know lifelong, all right, there's significant consequences. They think sure. in that moment. But we do provide opportunities for them to be able to reduce those consequences if they'll work with a counselor or if they'll work with you know some type of a, a counseling service. And most often, those will not be the Sioux Falls School District per se. It's just partnerships that we have with our our community because they'd be a better professional that way to help and right. intervene. Right. A big factor with that though is parents mm -hmm. and their involvement and <clears throat> their attentiveness to that that process. Mm -hmm. That's gonna gonna be a big make big, or break. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we're coming up on the end of our time. Um, any final um, words of encouragement for for parents um, who might find themselves in this situation? They're having a conversation with their children about something that's happened in another part of the country, something that's happened in their own school. There are resources available. Talk with, with the school, talk with mental health providers. Um, you're not in this alone. Um, that's what Just I would. Just reach out. Absolutely. And our key with the school district does go back to that see something, say something, because our greatest resource is our community and our parents and our students. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the things that we're gonna be aware of and intervene on in appropriate timing is because of that. Uh, and, and students know when somebody else is struggling and, and they've maybe changed friendships or other things are going on, students know that. And for them to be able to go in and talk to an adult, whether that be their parent, counselor, administrator, SRO, mm -hmm. somebody, mm -hmm. and then for that adult to make sure that they act on that to get it to the right person to be able to help. But, the see something, say something has been a critical component for us mm -hmm. to be able to help resolve some of these issues before they do become mm -hmm. bigger issues. Yeah, we could mm -hmm. count on several mm -hmm. uh, situations that we've used that um, where people have come forward and said, hey, I saw this and it just didn't yeah. seem right. And so um, we can't, I mean, it's a very simple concept, but a very important one. And we can't overemphasize the use of that if you um, have a concern to bring that concern uh, to a professional that can can seek out um, solutions to that concern. So we hope you've uh, spent this 30 minutes with us and uh, found that the school district and the community are working together in tackling these uh, cases of school violence and uh, really helping our children to understand consequences when things like this happen and also that there is help available if they need that help. Thank you for joining us today on Positive Parenting.